guys, it's Jazz. I'm back again. Thank you for coming back to Jazz and DTV. I really appreciate it. This is my friend and client, Sky. Hi. She knows she's being recorded. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> yeah, so we are in here. We are just having some shop talk. And um, we were talking about Sky's hair. She is, I'm going to put my mask back on. She is um, half white, half black. Yes. So she had a Caucasian mom, yes, African American dad. So what was that like as a kid, coming up with a white mom and you having mainly like African American hair, right? Yeah, it was. I think it was very traumatic for me. Now, like I'm now, I'm like really OCD because growing up, you know, you put some heat to your hair because you want to match the girls that you know the white girls have nice hair at school. Right. And they would say, "Oh, your hair looks so fine. It looks like uh, one person told me it looks like a squirrel, squirrel's tail." Huh? Like, cause you know, it had a little point tail that was all fried. Yeah. And then I'm like, "Oh, mom, I want blonde hair because you know those blonde girls have nice hair." So I would go to the store. Oh, they go back doing the perm from the dollar store. Oh lord. The dollar store. Remember, we had a little perm from like Family Dollar. You know, and I feel bad because my mom didn't know. She just wanted to make us happy. Right, right. So it's like, Mom, I want straight hair. So, you know, they would put the perm in your hair and you would wash it and the clumps of hair would come out. Oh, my God. Because your hair was natural. Your hair is naturally curly. Yeah, like I say, like a curly straight, you would say, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a frizzy. It's like kind of wavy. Yeah. Yeah. And so we would do that. And I feel like it was like, oh, you know, I, get, I can get it wet and not put heat to it, but my hair was falling out. Mm. So it's just like mom would do whatever she could to make me and my older sister have, but she's little hair is a little nicer than mine. Okay. So, you know, you go to school and you flat iron it, it's all like fried and split you flat ironing it to death, trying to make it straight. Yeah. As honestly, as the white girls at school, right? Yeah. Did you go to school with predominantly white? It was more of a um, Middle Eastern, so then her hair is even nicer. Mm, yeah. So it's like curly and you can tell like it's clean. You don't even wash it every day here. You, you know, you can't right. wash it every day. Right. So you would, and then my mom would take me to like a salon, like permanently white, and they, oh, we don't do that kind of hair. And it would hurt my feelings. It's like, what, what kind of hair do, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand. So one time mom had a hot comb, you know, back in the day, they used to use hot combs. Yeah. And we had a, I think about two weeks of washing it, because it was so nice, it was so itchy though. And he took it on the stove, and he used a hot comb, and I was so upset because it didn't look the same. When you, you're not supposed to know the hot comb shouldn't be like, if it burns the towels too hot. Right, <laughs> right. If it's brown on the towel, that means it's, it's too, too hot. hot. And then you don't know, so you're just taking hot comb through your hair and sitting in your hair. Yeah, that gold. Uh, yes. <laughs> that gold look because it's burning your hair. Bur oh, man, it was fried. It's crunchy. And it makes it even worse. And you get, you, kids are mean though, you know, you get made fun of because why does your hair look like, like, like it look bad? Yeah. And you're like, I, I don't know how to explain to you because you only do the best that you can. Right. So when I was able to get my, you know, start making my own money, I used to wear quick weaves because I was so embarrassed of my hair. Mm. And you go to someone who's cheap, you know, whatever, and they just braid it. And I think one time a girl pulled my hair back and put a big old bun in the back. Okay. And then put hair over it. So look, I was like a um, cone head. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and... Wait a minute. So did you get that done professionally or one of your friends did it? Per, she was supposed to be professionally. Like she had her own salon. Oh, wow. And you know, you're supposed to you know, do the braids or whatever, but she put me in a my hair stick, like a bun. Because some people do put it like in a ponytail, but that's only like if you have really short hair, like how my hair is now because I yeah. cut it. So I can afford to put it in a ponytail and then just, you know, put the cap yeah, on to do the This was like in the middle of my head. You have a lot of hair. That would never work. Oh, so I remember you going. Braid it. Oh yeah, I remember going home and going underneath like the uh, tracks, trying to undo my hair because it looked like I had a cone head. Oh my god. So I would not show my real hair. At one time, the stylist in Mexico, she went through a photo shoot with my real hair, and I stopped going to her because I was so embarrassed of okay. my hair because I didn't, I didn't love, lo love myself. Yeah. So as I got older and found, of course, you. It's just. Now I'm like so anal and so obsessed about buying like the best products, the high end, you know, tools and mm -hmm. taking vitamins and vitamins because if you have, it's sad to say, if your hair is poopy, you feel bad about yourself. And that's sad too. It is I sad. I think it's getting better now. Yes. Because it's more of a, you know, everybody wear natural hair type of thing. Yeah. But I remember back in the day, and I'm not even like a mixed kid, just being black you know yeah. if your hair was kinky yeah then it's more they call it nappy that's what it you is. know yeah back then when you were like quickly you're ashamed now it's like wigs everything's like 
you can express your thing. Yeah. Yeah. There it's like, oh, don't touch my head. I don't want you to feel the tracks or is right. that hair all yours? Yeah. And then it's like, if you're dating a guy and they think that's your hair and you're like, don't want to touch my head and they say that fake, you feel like, oh, well, are you going to leave me because I want to wear fake hair? Right. And this is what, 10 years, 11 years ago? And you know what's funny is actually... Um, even as popular as wigs are now, yeah. From what I understand, just talking to guys and stuff like that, a lot of guys they still don't like extensions. Yeah, they rather you have your own hair. But then at the same time, it's crazy because they like girls with long hair. And it sucks because kids can be so mean, you know. Kids are, oh my god, kids are so mean. And it's like you, God gave me this. Why can't you just? I'm trying to do my best I can to, you know, especially going to a white mom. She didn't know, you know. Right. And then she, my sister is Middle Eastern white. So you have that girl and she, me, my little sister, my sister, long hair down to her butt crack. And it's like, oh my God. why do I have this black nasty hair? I hate myself, you know. Right. So that's why I'm explaining why I'm so like OCD about my, my hair. And I'm sure too, like with your mom, um... I think like, and I could be wrong, but yeah. I feel like a lot of times white people that have black kids, they don't really know how to help you yeah. boost your confidence. You know what I'm saying? Because they've never been black before. It's true. So they don't know to say, you know, yeah. your black is beautiful and, you know, that type of thing. Especially if there's not a father there to help push that. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you come from a family who doesn't have a lot of money. It's like, oh, you want this $5 perm, put it in your hair, make you shut up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's sad, but... And just now, Jonathan, I would start wearing my hair, like I wash and blow dry it, and I was so embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, John, get out. I don't want you to see my hair. And now he's like, why do you do that? You're beautiful. So now, I blow dry my hair and let it be. Right. Because I was so embarrassed of him, you know, him being Caucasian or whatever. And I say, does my hair look so big? He goes, no, you look beautiful. Leave it a be. Why put so much heat to your hair? Let it grow. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Because you got to know that if a black guy, I'm sorry, if a white guy is with you, yeah. knowing that you're a black girl, he knows that your hair is not it's the not, same yeah. as, you know, if he was dating a white girl. And he likes it, obviously, because y'all been together for how long? Six years. Yeah. You right. like it? He better. Right. You know what <laughs> so I'm saying? It's just, I think that's something that you just got to learn on your own. And that's why it's so important to love yourself yeah. first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth. And my cousin told me this one day. She said, when you get up in the morning, she said, you brush your teeth. Tell yourself, you pretty B. Oh, I As love it. D-I-T-C-H. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> she nice. said, tell yourself before you walk out the door. She said, and um, don't let nobody else have to confirm to you that yeah. you're cute or that you're pretty. You know, and even my grandmother, she told me before, she said, when you leaving out the house and you look in the mirror, know already. Get yourself together so good to where you already know you look good. So if somebody says to you, oh, you look so pretty, you look so nice, it's just extra. Amen. You know, and you're like, oh, okay, I already knew that, but thank you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You're like, so right. And everybody doesn't have that person to tell them that. Yeah. You know, so honestly, I have felt kind of sorry for... um some white people in that aspect because yeah. like a lot of it's a lot of interracial couples these yeah. days so it's a lot of mixed kids right yeah so I have a lot of mixed clients and they don't know the first thing about their child's hair no which I don't fault them because you're not thinking about that when you having sex and Mm-mm. you know what I'm saying you get married to a black woman or a black guy you don't think about that no you know so you have a kid and you don't know what to do with their hair but i commend the people that will take their kids to go get their hair done yeah now what i don't think is fair is that you had this black baby but now the hair be all over the head it looks it at least your mom was like trying to help y'all you know yeah even though she didn't know what she was doing with the pressing comb and the perm and stuff she tried there's some people out there they don't even try it it's just you be walking past and the kids here just be like yeah and it's just like hey and i feel bad because sassia and like myers i'm like what that was me yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. it's like i just want to say even though you can't like afford it at least try to do like once or twice at least get their hair trimmed so right, it grows nice right. so when they get older they can maintain that so and then it's just i don't know it's just sad sometimes i just like you know you gotta help these 
And then when you, at that age, you take them to like black salons mm -hmm. who don't care about healthy hair care, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, and those hot combs and that hot press thing, I'm like, oh my God. And so it's like you're damn if you, damn if you don't until you actually understand how to understand your hair. I feel like I understand my hair now, what it likes, what it doesn't like. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just, you have to, I don't know, love yourself and enjoy what you got because you only get one head. You only get one head. Yeah. And it's only coming with one head of hair. That's it. And even if you cut it off, it don't mean it's going to come back a different uh, texture. Exactly. You know? So you got to take care of what you got. And it took me so long to let Jonathan actually see my natural hair. Like I would shower. I'm like, okay, lock the door. Get out. So that was really? so. So it, recently, actually. Wow. Like a month ago, I, let, I just let it be. I'm like, if you don't love me, there's there's five doors. Pick one. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is me. And I don't want to always put a flat iron or blow dry it. I want to, I always say, I love to tell him, I was like, when I was in my apartment, I used to walk around naked with my hair all big. I miss right, that. Yeah. So I do that now. And you should. Y'all about to get married. Exactly. So if you don't know by now what your hair look like. And even like the color, like going to like salons and then putting bleach in your hair. It's like, dude, I can't, you know, I don't want to cut my hair and you're like, you know your hair can't handle it, but they'll put bleach in your hair anyways. Yeah, they start will. breaking off. Yeah. They make a quick buck. That's so true. Honestly, I've seen, um, it's so funny, I was just talking to one of my clients about this a couple of days ago because she was telling me that she wanted to get her hair colored. Yeah. And she wanted me to bleach it blonde. Oh, whole and head? And I was telling her, yeah, she's uh, really gray, so she wanted to go blonde. Okay. And so I was telling her um, that I didn't think it was a good idea, you know, for her hair. I didn't think her hair would be able to handle it, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I was just telling her a lot of times, if you notice, people that bleach their hair a whole lot, eventually their hair starts to look fried and yeah. dry. And it's okay to get, you know, like a uh, hair color and highlights and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think you have to assess the person's hair before Foundation. you go in. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't give all of my clients sew-ins. Yeah. You know, I say, instead of a sew-in, let's do a quick weave or a wig. You know, because their hair might be too fine for a sew-in. And it breaks. Yeah. That's tension. First of all, you got these tight braids, right? Yeah. And then you got these wefts of hair that's sewing onto them. And then that kind of weighs it down. Okay. So it's it's not good for everybody, you know? Yeah. So I was telling her, you know, I didn't think that that was good. And um, we were just talking about how people will fry their hair to death and their stylists will color it and bleach it and bleach it so much until it's like literally fried where I can see and somebody like you who doesn't even do hair can yeah. see it, this person's hair is fried. I remember one time I was obsessed with blonde and then my front of my hair was so fried that she said, let's do a pixie style at the top. Oh my God, Jasmine. And she showed me pictures of them like, oh yeah, look cute. And when she cut it and I turned around, it was just like spiky in the middle long hair oh, wait a minute. What? i'm not joking with you what kind of hairstyle is this a pixie style with long like a how do you say uh like country singers what are they called um mohawk that's oh what it turned out gosh. to be so i had to wear it to joe deer today yes <laughs> so i had to wear my hair pinned back back inside when it was back in style every day because all i had was this pixie style i said what in the oh hell because you trust them to guide you yeah she guided me the wrong way i said what in the world did you do to me so it took forever for that to grow out oh that's it was hot crazy. mess hot mess so i was dating I'll tell you maybe like two stories. I was dating this one older guy. I met him in the gym, whatever. And I was at the time, I was bleach blonde, like bleach, bleach blonde my hair. Mm -hmm. That was always wear it up because it was fried. And he would say to me, I like girls who have long, dark, say like their natural hair color. I'm like, mm -hmm. and that makes you feel bad because you're trying to make yourself feel good. But you have this person telling you one thing. And there was another guy I was dating where I was wearing a quick hoop, but I didn't want him to touch it because I was embarrassed. And he mm -hmm. goes, is that a wig or is that fake hair? And at that time... You know, it wasn't like it's now, and I was. Yeah. You feel so like you just want to crawl into a like a ball because you're so so embarrassed. Was he white or black? He was white. Oh, okay. Another yeah. one was Middle Eastern. What was another? There's so many. I think I, most of my blocked them out. <laughs> yeah. Just I feel like just a whole like high school, middle school, high like growing up. Those are some of the worst years, aren't they? 
and just you just want to fit in and have you just want to fit, fit in. in yep and if you don't fit in you know i think the other ones he told me like a squirrel my hair look a squirrel tail oh my god because it was so fried yeah i don't i can't forget that one that was the one that stuck with me for a while what do you feel like um made you start to realize that hey i'm beautiful my hair is beautiful and if you don't like it hey whatever um oof, i'm still trying to fight that one i still working on it still working on it i feel also this my spouse jonathan who's with me also helps me embrace mm -hmm. myself him knowing that I'm, you know, part white, part black, and he doesn't discriminate. He doesn't say, "Oh, what's wrong with your nasty?" or "Why is your hair so curly?" or he'll won't say any mean comments. I think that also helps me. Yeah. Because if you're alone and you know you're dating people and always make comments about your hair, "Oh, why you don't do this? Why do that?" also discourage you and start doing something here to make people pleased about it. You mm -hmm. know. So I'm still trying to fight that battle, but I think the fact that I maintain my hair and keep it healthy. Helps me inner my inner self. Yeah, because it's beautiful. Exactly. Like, you know, I to this day I still have my moments, but when I look back, it could be worse. Definitely, it could be a lot worse. Beautiful hair. And and also that I found you, yay! Because you guide me the right way. You made the shampoo conditioner that is awesome. I'm so obsessed. Thank you. Because when you go with the Ata and you try to look read the back of it, oh, dry, damaging hair. It's good for all. You kind the hair people, they mm -hmm. say. And you're like, my hair feels so dry, it's so brittle, and so, I don't know, chemical-y. Yeah. Like, back in the day, Pantene. Remember Pantene for the it black? Had that film oh, on my it. God. Yeah. You thought that was good, but it was actually bad. So that also, you guided me and telling me, oh, don't cut it or do this, and, you know, we'll do this treatment has also made me feel good about myself, too. So, like, thank you for that. You're welcome. And thank you for coming. This is one of my favorite one of my favorite clients. Oh, like thank I you. said, we're friends too. You yeah, know? you are my friend. I I could never like leave or go anywhere else. Oh, thank you. Because my last stylist, she was very very good at what she did, but she would hire people to you know help wash and wash your hair. Mm -hmm. And you know you know me, so you're very gentle with the blow dryer. My hair doesn't get tangled. It's very it's not burning my scalp. And this girl blow dry my hair and ends are knots and she would just like yank it. Oh, uh-uh. My hair is like, my head is like on fire. And I was thinking, like, I don't want to be like, hey, or put some heat protection in there. Right. And I had to ask him, like, you got some, or we're out. I'm like, well, if you're out, then I don't want you to blow dry my hair. You know what I'm saying? Now we're out. Girl, go get some more. I you mean, doing curls today. Yeah, some like loose curls. Yeah. So I thank you for just being, just, I don't know, you understand, you listen, not just do here to you know of course you want to make money but just not here just to you know what i'm saying right yeah to understand each client and appreciate my high maintenance when it comes to my hair <laughs> yes i definitely try to you know and you're very good thank you very good Thanks. even my future husband's obsessed with your shark conditioner he's like can you grab two of each i said i'll see that is so <laughs> funny i love that he likes to use that yes because it just I used to hate washing my hair because the shampoo you buy is just so poopy. Like, you know, like it would just, so you're like, I can actually enjoy washing my hair knowing that my hair is still going to be healthy and not stripped. Right. So that's also like what makes this, makes you who you are. It's, it's Yay, awesome. Thank you. I love you. you I love you too, so Gavin. Amazing. You were all awesome. Thank you. Yeah, but I, I think it's a beautiful thing how your future husband, your fiance, how he helps you on that journey to yeah feel good about yourself because i feel like if you're gonna be with a person they should definitely be helping you in that way you know what i'm saying exactly like if you don't add to me then it's because you're your own worst enemy you know yep we so hard on ourselves oh, you know so weird. especially girls girls can be brutal yep we think too much about that kind of carnal stuff a lot of times too yeah I have been uh, guilty of it myself. And you know, also growing up, have, on top of having bad hair, I was really, really, I know I'm still thin, but skinny. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, you know, on top of getting made fun of your hair, you get made fun of because you're so, they would say, so skinny and like make comments. And to this day, to this moment, I still have that anxiety in my head. Really? You have yes. a beautiful figure. You're beautiful. It's just, 
you know, you see people with like big boobs and me being half African American, you seem like I would have some kind of nice features, but I'm just have that part where I'm just like tall and thin. So but it's you're just- You're a cute little shape. You're not just tall and thin. Girl, big boobs ain't everything. I don't have big boobs either. But guess what? But it's look at your whole body. Mouthful. Listen. <laughs> Girl. You know, people would laugh, oh, you're so skinny, and you eat. And I'm like, yeah, I eat. I just have, you know, I got the genes on my side of my family that are skinny. So you got nappy hair and you're skinny. So that was a rough. Which is so funny because you only thinking that because of your white side because mm -hmm. you don't have nappy hair. Not in no. the least bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just, I remember my grandfather telling me that, um, Cause I remember we used to say say stuff like, yeah, you know, she has good hair. Yeah. And he's like, any hair is good hair if you yeah. got some. You know, for some people walking around here, they don't have no hair. Exactly. So if you have hair, that's good hair. It's all in how you take care of it. That's true. Somebody could have, you know, like the thickest, the kinkiest, the nappiest hair, and we'll go get it pressed and straightened. It'd be longer and shinier and looking better than yours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. all in how you take care of it. And a lot of times we just have to learn to appreciate what we do have because there's so many people that don't even have as good as what you do, you know? That's true, yeah. I try to tell myself that every day. Yep. I had to remind myself today, you know, it's not always good to, well, it's not good period to focus on what you don't have when you got so much good that you do have yeah and that's also why Jonathan he always I'm like oh that looks too skinny today or if I don't eat like I'm like oh my god I gotta eat something like even though I just ate a big beast meal mm -hmm. I'm like I need to eat you more just that inside of me getting made fun of of like you know I am who I am and right. I'm skinny if you don't like skinny girls then you know and I feel like there should be more conversation with people who are thinner I agree because yeah. it's like a lot of times people always talk about and feel bad for people who are heavier yeah. or fat but it's a lot of people that get made fun of because they're skinny too and I think it's just like this world is just crazy first of all yeah. and secondly it's just society makes people feel bad about the things that they do have and so then every Everybody wants what they don't have exactly you know so it's like it's really crazy in that aspect if you don't have big boobs you want big boobs the girls that have really big boobs they trying to get rid of them that's why it's the surgery called breast reduction you're right because they're heavy and it's not comfortable I have people in my family that have had breast reductions because their boobs are so big until they weigh down on them and they um Get on those grooves in their shoulders and they make their backs hurt and so they're leaning down like this because yeah. their breasts are big you know but society doesn't say like talk about like that there was like oh we're guys want this guys want that and if you're not big and right you know, it's like they need to talk about more of real life and what it really is about one of my good friends will not play anymore i would always go to her house and the first thing her now husband would say was like you need to eat cheeseburger he eat cheeseburger. First thing he, he we can not see each other for months, and he even on the camera we were walking outside. He goes, "Sky, you need to eat. You're too skinny." And I told her, "I go, you keep saying that to me, and you know what I've yeah, been through." Yeah, remember you telling me about yeah, that? I'm yeah, I'm just like now I don't want to go to your house because I'm like you're nothing to look at either. You know, yeah, what I'm he saying? probably look like a cheeseburger. He does, and see? I'm like, and she's like, "Well, he wants he likes girls who are thicker." I'm like, "We are together, right?" He just, like you exactly. Well, keep it that way. Amen. It's like shit. Like people say, I'm just like if you don't. I think I'm a good for, we're not here I'm not here for you exactly and you're I can say oh yeah you're over it go lose some weight and you make a joke about that oh yeah you know whatever right but I'm not gonna make a joke about that because that's my insecurity people are like oh when you have kids you know get I'm like maybe I don't want that do I have to have kids to gain weight you know what I'm saying yeah maybe you don't want to be thick and that's fine like I, I you know people just don't understand if people want to be thick then that's great if you want to be slim that's great. If more people minded their business, be this world place. would be so much better. So nice. So what advice would you give to a young girl who is 
um, biracial and kind of going through what you went through as far as like maybe feeling like, you know, their hair isn't good enough because it's not as straight and all yeah. that kind of stuff. What advice would you give? Oh, man. I would just say, you know, it will, eventually, it will get better. Love yourself. Even though your parent, mom, who could be Caucasian, doesn't know what you're doing, just don't do the perming, don't do the coloring, don't do this wear naturally. Just love who you are because at the end of the day, that is your head. You got to wake up with it, you go to bed with it. Yep. And if and you got to find a style, I think that's my heart, find a style that you love, that you feel confident in. If it's natural, if it's, I don't know, straight or curly, I think long time I was trying to find a style that could be natural. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, you just gotta love yourself and it is what it is. I agree. Yep. Find someone like Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should cut that right, part out. Get you a listen. Yes. I'll help you take care of it. And I see vitamins. I've known a lot of water and biotin. I've obsessed with it. Yeah. And I feel like that's actually helped my hair just thrive. Water? Biotin. Biotin. Yes. Vitamins. And a good hairdresser. Collagen. Yes. Collagen is very good for your hair. And trimming. Oh, uh, me. And Miss <laughs> Jasmine, yes. Right. <laughs> Look, because I'm going to keep you together. Yes, you will. As long as you come to your appointments. And don't find a hairdresser that wants to color your hair, burn your hair, you know, all that half stuff that they can't appreciate your na- want to be natural or just a quick trim and they don't want to do that, then maybe you need to find somebody else. I'm telling you. Well, thank you well, so thank much, Thank you. Scott. It looks so nice. Thank you. Yay. So that was our shop talk for today. Thank you, Sky. Thank you. Bye. Come say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, Sky. Sky. Bye. Thank you guys for watching again. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Push the notifications button so that you can be notified for the next video. And that was shop talk for today. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you for watching my first episode of Shop Talk. This is just the first one, so you know it's going to get better each and every time. I also want to say that this particular episode today does not reflect every single biracial child or mother or father or um, situation. It's just Sky's story in particular. So I just want to make that clear. I don't want people to be like, you know, you're saying this about all biracial kids or all white or all black. It's not that. It's just her own personal story. And I also want to say that no matter what color you are, no matter what texture your hair is, remember, you are beautiful. Either way, God made you that way. And when God made you, he knew what he was doing. And he don't make mistakes. So keep that in mind when you start to feel down about your hair or the color of your skin, just remember that what you have, somebody else wish that they had it. So be so careful to be thankful because what we could be doing is not even being here. Like life is a luxury and let's all enjoy it. And that's it.